ever tried watching the old TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea from 1964? If not, you're in for a roller coaster of funny, surprising, and sad facts. No need for fancy talk, just the straight facts about this classic Hollywood show. Did you see the series when it first aired? Or maybe you found it later, watching episode after episode like a pro sailor in rough seas. Classic Hollywood actors take the stage, and I'm curious, who's your favorite among them? The show follows the adventures of the crew on the Seaview submarine, dealing with sea monsters and spy stuff. It's an exciting ride, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Now, here's the deal, keep watching, because there are lots of interesting stories and behind-the-scenes info to discover. Don't miss out on these bits that make your watching experience even better. But hold on, before you go on, we're interested, what's your favorite memory or personal experience with this series? Share your stories in the comments. We want to hear about your deep sea adventures with Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. So get ready for a unique journey full of classic Hollywood charm and underwater adventures. And remember, your stories add another layer to the history of this TV series. Share them. The 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea holds nostalgic value for many viewers who grew up with it. However, looking at it today, it becomes evident why other series, such as the first Star Trek, are more fondly remembered. Unlike its counterparts, Voyage falls short in character development. After four years and over a hundred episodes, none of the characters, including Admiral Nelson, Lee Crane, Chip Morton, Sharky, and Kowalski, show any significant development. Their dialogue is interchangeable, and their motivations seem driven solely by the thin plots rather than genuine character traits. Another drawback is the repetitive nature of the series. It often falls into predictable patterns, with episodes featuring monsters roaming through the corridors, impersonations of key characters, and oversized menaces wrestling the sea view. The reuse of elements like the dinosaur from the Lost World or imploding submarines becomes noticeable and somewhat tiresome. Despite these criticisms, there are still episodes within Voyage that stand out for their peculiarities. Some are on par with favorites from Star Trek, Doctor Who, and The Outer Limits due to their notable weirdness and perversity. For example, the episode featuring Michael Dunn in a clown suit with his wax men, or the one with a potted orchid as a would-be world conqueror offer a unique viewing experience. In conclusion, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea has its moments of bizarre pleasure, but it falls short in character development and suffers from repetitive plot structures. While some episodes stand out for their uniqueness, the overall series remains overshadowed by its more revered counterparts. And regarding a potential new feature version of Voyage, one could only hope for a fresh take with engaging performances. Imagine Rowan Atkinson as Admiral Nelson and Bill Murray as Captain Crane injecting new life into the characters. Such a revival, if done creatively, could bring a new perspective to the classic series. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, despite early rumors about Klemperer's musical talents, is known for its mix of realistic Cold War stories and imaginative fiction in the first season. In its 31 episodes, the show explores spy and sci-fi themes featuring sea creatures, dinosaurs, and aliens. Notably, the main adversaries are unfriendly foreign governments. The scripts, while fanciful, keep a modern setting, giving viewers something familiar. In 1990, Klemperer received the Silver Medallion from the Motion Picture and TV Fund for his charitable work, along with the Civil Brand Humanitarian Award. His efforts beyond acting show a strong dedication to helping others, the series, although not as focused on developing characters as shows like Star Trek, has its own appeal. It sometimes follows predictable patterns with monsters and big threats. Yet, certain episodes with their oddities rival the uniqueness of other sci-fi classics. While Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea might not excel in character growth or break from repetitive plots, its peculiar delights and standout episodes make it unique. Looking forward, a potential movie version could benefit from a fresh take, imagining new portrayals by actors like Rowan Atkinson and Bill Murray to breathe new life into the familiar characters. Actor David Hedison, born on the same date as Ross Martin, faced personal challenges during his time on the show. Distraught after his second wife, Valentina Cordes, left him and moved to Italy with their young son, Jackie Basehart, Hedison found support from close friend Warren Stevens. Stevens, concerned for Hedison's well-being, provided him with an adjoining apartment for months. Despite Hedison's efforts to maintain contact with Valentina, the relationship ended in divorce. Hedison later became the father of actor Christopher Pate. 
The 1964 TV series, despite its drawbacks in character development and repetitive plot structures, remains a nostalgic journey for many viewers. Unlike its more revered counterparts, the characters in the series, including Admiral Nelson and others, lack significant growth over the four years and more than a hundred episodes. The dialogue appears interchangeable, and their motivations seem driven solely by thin plots. However, amid the criticisms, some episodes stand out for their peculiarities. Notable examples include Michael Dunn in a clown suit with his wax men and an episode featuring a potted orchid as a would-be world conqueror. Despite its shortcomings, the series offers moments of bizarre pleasure. The show, known for its mix of realistic Cold War stories and imaginative fiction in the first season, explores spy and sci-fi themes. It features sea creatures, dinosaurs, aliens, and unfriendly foreign governments as main adversaries. While not focused on character development like Star Trek, it maintains appeal through its blend of modern settings and fanciful scripts. In 1990, Klemper, associated with the series, received recognition for his charitable work, showcasing dedication beyond acting. Despite its limitations, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea possesses peculiar delights and standout episodes that make it unique. A potential movie version could benefit from a fresh take, imagining new portrayals by actors like Rowan Atkinson and Bill Murray to breathe new life into familiar characters. David Hedison, known for his role in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, faced personal challenges during his time on the show. Distraught after his second wife, Valentina Cordes, left him and moved to Italy with their young son, Jackie Basehart, Hedison found support from close friend Warren Stevens. Stevens, concerned for Hedison's well-being, provided him with an adjoining apartment for months. Despite Hedison's efforts to maintain contact with Valentina, the relationship ended in divorce. Hedison later became the father of actor Christopher Pate. Post Hogan's Heroes, Hedison's career took a musical turn, earning him accolades for his singing talent in opera and musical theater. He also lent his voice for orchestral narrations and studio recordings. His versatility in the entertainment industry expanded further when he created the role of C.C. Capwell on the soap series Santa Barbara. While the show lacks in character development and exhibits repetitive plot structures, certain episodes stand out for their peculiarities. Notable examples include Michael Dunn in a clown suit with his wax men and an episode featuring a potted orchid as a would-be world conqueror. Despite its shortcomings, the series offers moments of bizarre pleasure. In its first season, it blends realistic Cold War stories with imaginative fiction across 31 episodes. The series explores spy and sci-fi themes featuring sea creatures, dinosaurs, and aliens with unfriendly foreign governments as main adversaries. The scripts, while fanciful, maintain a modern setting, providing viewers with a familiar backdrop. Klemper, associated with the series, received recognition for his charitable work in 1990, showcasing dedication beyond acting. Despite its limitations, the show possesses peculiar delights and standout episodes that make it unique. A potential movie version could benefit from a fresh take, imagining new portrayals by actors like Rowan Atkinson and Bill Murray to breathe new life into familiar characters.